During a commencement speech in Texas Saturday, former New York City Mayor Michael Bloomberg said Americans face an epidemic of dishonesty that's worse than terror. The greatest threat to American democracy isn't communism or jihadism or any other external force or foreign power. It is our own willingness to tolerate dishonesty in service of party and in pursuit of power. My mic fell off. <laughs> <laughs> so, Bloomy thinks <laughs> words from Trump are deadlier than deeds from a terrorist. Which leads one to ask, when Bloomberg was mayor of New York City, what do you think his number one concern was? Fibs or terror? Mm. Do you think he woke up every morning and thought, my God, I hope someone's not lying on their tax returns? No, instead he was focused on terror. The number one threat to New York City and America was and still is terrorism. Not whether Trump exaggerates about Mexico paying for the wall. Point is, for Bloomy to express his own gripes, like climate change or smoking or gun control, first he had to keep the city safe so he could have the luxury of griping. So now, in a speech, when he reorders our concerns just to jab Donald Trump, he's committing the very sin he derides. He's falsifying facts. For the only way one can complain about partisanship being worse than communism or jihadism is to diminish the piles of bodies caused by both. But all of this could be due to one truth. Right now, Trump may make history with the Koreas and Bloomy. He's whining about fake news out of college. That's got to hurt. <laughs> so, uh, Jesse, do you think this was just some kind of hyperbole you do in a speech? He can't really mean that this is worse than terror or, or communism. No, I mean, a lie didn't fly into a building and kill 3,000 yeah. people. Mm -hmm. um, but I am available, as yes. we we're talking about, to do commencements. <laughs> if anybody's interested, I, I think I'd look good in the tassel. But I that was a nice outfit. That was. Yeah. I like the, the yellow. We, we look like a waiter the at the medieval restaurants. You know, what are they called? Medieval times? Medieval times? Yeah. Yeah, Have you I been like there that. recently? Um, I eat there every night. <laughs> Atkins friendly. <laughs> um, I love the line about how do you know when a politician is lying, his lips are moving. Mm -hmm. I think all politicians lie. I would rather have a politician lie, Talking though, about... about I would have, rather have a politician lie about sex or about a crowd size than about not being able to keep your health care or a terrorist attack. There's white lies and then there's whoppers and that's fine. This was clearly a shot at Trump and the people in the press that don't hold him accountable. But I, I think the fake news puts out uh, maybe the same amount of junk as President Trump does, if not more. I mean, I have the fake news media awards right here, Juan, and I'm happy to recite them. That's fine. At the same, it's the one, at the same time, I don't think Trump's a liar. I just think he's a boaster. He's, yeah. a, he's from Queens. Real estate tycoon is the biggest. It's the best. It's yeah. the most expensive. And a lot of people consider yeah. those opinions lies. They'll fact check his opinion. He'll say, I'm the best looking president there ever is. And then the Pinocchio people fact check that. Yeah, it's like a car salesman saying, like, the, a, a little old lady just drove this car to the church on weekends. And everybody's winking. It's a sale. It's right, what it's salesmen sales do. All right, Juan, uh, should Bloomberg apologize to America for what he just did? Right now. <laughs> I, think, I, I don't know where you'd have to start with the apology. He has to apologize. Every Trump. single American he has to start no, no, no. on one coast. Trump. Yeah, okay, so Trump, Trump should apologize. I mean, to, you know what's interesting for is what? you said this is like so shocking. You should be surprised how many people in the intelligence community, I, I think back to Leon Panetta, I think of John Brennan, et cetera, right? People who say it is the biggest threat to us as a nation, this kind of divide, because it's just what the Russians want. We can't decide anything. Everything is a huge argument. Last week I wrote a column, I said, you know, when you look at what went on, in terms of the decision to pull the United States away from the Iran deal, the, the president, with his boastfulness, or however you want to describe it, I think it's persuasive to a lot of people because there's partisan sport. They say, oh, the Iran deal has been violated. It was a weak deal, it was a terrible deal. And that yet the fact is, that the deal was never violated. The, de the fact is that people say this was keeping Iran from having nukes. But now it suddenly said, well, maybe it was a bad deal. Maybe it's just a partisan fight. Maybe he doesn't like Obama. Maybe he doesn't like John Kerry. And we lose sight of the truth. We can't even get anything done. 
All right, so now Juan is deflected. Kimberly, to an entirely know. different topic. Let's T stick to totally Bloomberg. Totally different show, totally different Bloomberg segment. is mad that he didn't run for president. Oh, yeah. He's, That's what it is. He's mad that he didn't run for president. He's mad that President Trump has honored his campaign promises and is checking off wins on the board. Anyone who loves this country should be happy that we're moving towards peace. Anyone should be happy that the economy is doing better. Anyone should be happy that there are more jobs here in America and that minorities are feeling better about what's happening in this country. There's so many accomplishments and things. And as it relates to national security and foreign policy, he has completely, completely changed the dynamic. This is a new style of politics and engaging to create effective results. Why not? If you keep doing the same thing and you end up at the end result, why not try a different way or a different path to be able to achieve these ends? Also, President Trump is using social media and Twitter to be able to communicate. So there is transparency there versus someone regurgitating, going through it, and then putting something out. I don't think there's a downside to that because every person then can be the individual consumer and determine what you think of it versus someone telling you what to think about it. I think it. there's a tremendous downside to constant lying from the man is the president, right. the leader of our country, and people can't trust okay, him. Okay, well, we're, we're never going to solve this. Is he lying? Is he boasting? Lie? Dana, clean it up for us. Well, I would say, like, I think that every commencement speech would be more successful if it made no news. Yeah. The speech is supposed to be about the students and the inspiration yeah. for, for them to go out into the world to celebrate the fact that they're getting through college. Right. They're going to have a chance to go and make their mark on the world, and worrying about fake news is probably not the highest priority. I I want to do a commencement address for an online college. Would that be great? Just Phoenix sit at, University. Phoenix, Phoenix University would be amazing. You're their top choice. I, you know it. <laughs>